Welcome to the BVTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode three, sadly the final one, in the BVTV Dream Team Trilogy with leadership coach and consultant Maureen Falvey. Hello for the final time, Maureen. Hello, Malcolm. I'm so pleased to continue the conversation with you. I said final time. It's just the final time for this trilogy because at the end, I'm going to try and persuade you to come back again because you've, you've got so much to give and say to people. I said at the end of episode two that high performing teams don't just happen. They need to be formulated and led by an effective leader. And in my mind, using today's leader skills, that of the moment, not yesteryears. My personal belief is that today's leaders need to both understand emotional intelligence and improve their EQ, their emotional quotient. In fact, it's said that 80% of your success is down to your EQ and only 20% your technical ability. I also believe that every leader can, can, can develop his or her EQ. So what's your thinking here? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I don't know how I could do the work that I do as a coach and a trainer if I didn't believe that someone could become that and increase it, right? Toward the tail end of my advertising career, I started to get so curious about leadership and that person over there that everyone wants to work with and for, how do they do that? And can someone learn it? And of course, the answer is yes. That's why my job is so fulfilling right now. Um, So this EQ piece, you threw out some great numbers up front and I'm going to give you one or two more, which is that 90% of people with high EQ are also top performers. And only 10% of people with low EQ are top performers. So we see the opportunity. We understand how important this is. As you said up front, the, the, the further we go in our career, the more that's important. Mm-hmm. Not the, even the cognitive abilities, but our ability to form relationships of trust, our ability to be self-aware, our ability to read a room and know how we're being received and perceived. Um, there's a, a Korean art form called Nunchi, N-U-N-C-H-I. And I love this. Um, apparently children, they're learning from the time they're three or four, which is the ability to know whether we've lost our audience, so to speak. Yes. And this is vital, right? When we're so much thinking of ourselves or we're nervous, we can't really see what's going on around us. And mm. there was a CEO that I worked with once at Sachi and Sachi. And, uh, and uh, we were in a pitch, you know, that's a big moment in, yeah. in, my, in, yeah. in, my, in my former industry. And we were pitching. And this guy uh, that we were pitching to, the prospect, was so bored by our ideas that he put his head down on the desk as if to telegraph, you know. And usually we keep going and we present more slides. It was a two-hour pitch, so you fill the time. This was 10 minutes in. And our CEO stood up and she said, we're done. And the gentleman, gentleman, he lifted his head. And and he said, excuse me. And she said, clearly, there's nothing here that's of interest to you. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you wasting mine. So we're finished. Now, that one wasn't hard to read. (laughs) That was a little more. And I love that she did that. Uh, But we want to read the subtleties, right? You've got someone on your team and you say, John, how are you doing? And John says, fine. But he's got a tear rolling down his cheek. We read that. John, how are you really doing? What do you need? How can I help? So this EQ thing is really important. And here's the tricky thing. If you ask people, do you have high EQ? Are you self-aware? They all say yes. I want you to be brave and find out and be okay with whatever you learn. Mm. I work with another CEO and she wasn't sure. Remember I said in, I think in episode one, I'm on a mission in 2022 to make sure no one knows how, wonders how they're doing. (laughs) And she sent out a survey to find out how she's doing. And she is an incredible leader. But one bit of feedback, she said, what is your experience of being on the other side of me? How great is that question? How brave is that question? Yes. What she got back 99% of the time was Mm. uh, we're intimidated. You're so darn good at your job that we don't always feel safe to make a mistake or to fail or to bring you something that isn't absolutely perfect. So now Mm. she's putting together a plan with me to create safety for her people. Now that her IQ is higher. And she knows what it's like to be on their side, on the other side of her. Yeah. Listen, I need to ask you a question whilst you're here, because um, today's leaders, I believe, have, have changed. They're much more compassionate and, and understanding. Um, but the traditional leader wouldn't go ahead with things like EQ. I know I've been down the line with lo- lots of them on it there, um, because it may show that they're not infallible. They had to believe 
that that was the way to be a leader, to be infallible. That's not the way today, is it? No, no. And in fact, um, this elusive goal of perfection is exhausting and it's a Mm. waste of time and you will never get to your joy that way. I mean, on the, on, at the end of all of this is fulfillment and joy, right? Yes, yes. If you took a dot, you, I think they're called protractors. I'm going back to fifth yeah. grade math. But you put a dot in the center and you use that protractor to go, or whatever the thing is, to make a circle around. The, com- the compass, got, the compass. Yeah. compass. Yeah. And you got yeah. a really big magnifying, <laughs> I wasn't very good at math, a really big magnifying glass and you zoomed in, that dot isn't in the center. What are you chasing that for? Yeah. Yeah. As we go into this ivory tower, we got a bad brief, a faulty brief that said, you're supposed to be perfect. You're supposed yeah. to know, don't you dare ask. And so what ends up happening is they call it the iceberg of ignorance. It's going to make mm-hmm. you even more insecure. We are yeah. only, when we're up there, 4% aware of how we're doing and 4% aware of how our team is doing. That is so dangerous. Yeah. So what yeah. do we need is to take that brief that said we're supposed to be perfect and rip that up, put it in the trash can where it belongs. You will mm-hmm. actually increase your confidence by asking the question, how am I doing? I am yeah. your boss, whatever that means, because I'm here to create safety, the conditions under which you do your best work. How am I doing against that KPI? Yeah, I think if we should dispel then for what you're saying, dispel that story that everybody goes about. It. It's lonely at the top. It doesn't have to be lonely at the top, does it? Yeah, we're lonely because we put ourselves up there alone and we stopped creating the connections and the relationships and we stopped asking for help. Mm. We are As human beings, we are hardwired to ask for help from the time of three. We love to be of service, but we get to the top and we say, well, I'm supposed to be perfect. I got it. It's lonely. It's sad. And it's also why it can make us wildly insecure. Imposter syndrome comes up more often in C-suite people than the juniors. Without a doubt. Thanks, Maureen. Now, let's, for the final time, give viewers and listeners details of URL. Now, you see this that, that's on the screen behind me, um, viewers. I want you to take an S out of it. It's out because it, Malcolm was just too, being too generous and, and put far too many S's in. It's markstrongcoaching.com. Go ahead, listeners, all the W's, all the W's dot Mark strong coaching.com all over the world co- companies are, are suffering not just from the economy or covid or supply chain or a myriad of other things but principally because their people are moving on it doesn't have to be that way as i trust you discovered in my bbtv episodes with maureen falvey thanks maureen for a great trilogy oh it's my pleasure so good to be with you today malcolm <laughs>